interesting. Now the ratios, right? The, the, this is one of the original um, order flows tools. And in the past, it would always be a blue number above or below the bar, whether it was a bullish number or a bearish number. We've changed that so that it's the bullish um, ratios are going to be blue, the bearish ratios are going to be red. Okay, and it gets a little interesting on how you're going to, you could actually draw a zone out. So the ratios that I use 30 for price exhaustion, 0.69 for price defense. The zone is drawn to one. Now, sort of one of the differences, okay, is if it's a bullish ratio, right, you see there's, it's got the, the number underneath, right, the zero. But there's also a blue box, just as if there's a bearish ratio. Let's find one here. Again, you know, zero with the red box around it. Um, that's with the zone drawn out to one. So if you don't want to do that, you just go in there, you change that to zero, right? Then it would just print. Um, then it'll just print the 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 ratio, the color blue for something that's bullish or red for something that's bearish. So you can see it, that is sort of how the old version looked, okay? Except for it was red for um, bearish. Now, again, if the number is just black, that's just your normal order flow, okay? And it's gonna plot, right, the blue or the red if it's a bearish or bullish ratio as well, right, right down here. Um, one of the other things that you can do is uh, someone, you know, when we're putting this together, I told my program, I said, well, what about the bars, you know, where you have something that's bullish or bearish, you know, don't you sort of want to draw out a zone? And it's like, you know, where are we going to draw out the zone from on this setting? So, um, until tested, right, again, you know, I'm not sure if you can draw it out with the zone size of zero, but I, I just keep it at one. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to draw it out from the ratio number. It's going to draw out the zone from the actual ratio number itself. It's not drawing it. So it's one tick below the low of the bar or one tick above the high of a bar. And you, know, you can see here, right? So it just comes back. Again, it's not, I don't want to say right now, it's not something I'm focusing on, on trading you know, for pullbacks to a ratio. I've never really looked at it like that. I've, I've just looked at them for, because, you know, the ratio reads the order flow in the bar. And what it's doing is telling you if, if the bar has bullish or bearish order flow right now. So, um, you know, like for example, even though this bar has got bearish order flow here at 744, I'm not looking for the market necessarily to come back to it. I right? test that you know, get within one tick of that high and then, you know, move. But because um, really what I want to be alerted to with the ratios is what's the order flow doing right now? Is it bullish or bearish or just your normal order flow, right? Because I like to look at them at swing lows like here or um, I don't know if I got one on a swing high. Um, no, but again, it's, I, I then once we started drawing out these ratios, again, you know, it's just one of those things that, I just found it interesting how often a market sort of come back to those previous highs or lows of the bars that have the bearish or bullish um, order flow, like right here, right? So, you know, like right here as well. Um, so that's, you know, how you could use, you know, that's sort of one of the changes in the um, order flows ratios. Again, you know, I've done a lot of videos on, on the ratios, uh, what they mean and, and how you could use them in your trading. You know, some people have taken my, or years ago when we first released the software, you know, the ratios was one of those that was the first piece in there, you know, one of the four legacy indicators, if you will, because I used to calculate these ratios by hand, you know, I want to say by hand, but on a calculator or in my head, um, and most of them I could do in my, my head, but um, someone, you know, it, it's, there's no big secret, you know, calculus that's involved there, simple um, division, but, you know, someone copied it and put it out as like this order flow algo indicator or something. It's like, come on. And, um, but then again, you know, they, they figured it out, but then they don't, 
know how to apply it. So, you know, a lot of these tools, you know, I'm the one that, I'll say invented them, but I'm the first one that started using them and found them in the order flow based on how I trade and then this is how you use it. So it's not like, you know, I got a book on order flow. Trade. I read a lot of books now. Now there's a lot of books on trading order flow. A lot of the same things just copied out of my books, out of my courses, um, you know, and it's like, I, I read some of them and I'm just like, these people understand what they're they're doing. The way they're looking at it is is incorrect. But, um, you know, every trader's got their own opinion of the market. Now the PLC slingshot is, you know, it's a POC indicator. Again, it's enabled and it's fixed, right? For that bar, because you wanna see the bars where it's appearing. Like here, this is a bearish one. Um, you know, if there's a, you know, this was a bullish one. Now you could, sort of one of the changes in the Orflow 6 version is, um, change that to fix is you could again draw it out until tested okay and a slingshot point of control is it's it's a, it's a form you know anything dealing with point of controls is in a way support and resistance so you know if i have if i know i have this bullish plc slingshot i know in this bar i've got this support here so i'm looking for it to hold over the next several bars and it's going to give me a nice trade um, to the upside, as long as we're staying above it, you know, I want to be going in that direction. You know, if I'm using prominent, or so if I'm using the slingshot point of control, um, you know, there was nothing else there that was until tested, but, um, you know, that's a bullish one. You know, here's a bearish one here, right? The market sort of came right back up that level. Here, market sold off, came down to this bullish one, and just sort of went sideways. You know, this one went sideways, one, two, three bars in a row. Um, let's go back <laughs> to the bearish one. Um, let's go back to, you know, there's another bearish one up here. Again, you know, as long as I'm looking at it as it's, it's holding over the next couple of bars and I start seeing something bearish in the order flow, like here, right? I got a bearish ratio. I've got, um, an exhaustion print in the next bar, another bearish ratio. And, um, you know, a zero print actually appearing in here as well. You know, it's, it's telling me, yeah, you know what? I, I've got this overhead supply and I'm getting bearish information. You know, you can see these bars got four things in the order flow. This one's got four, this one's got three. And I said, no, okay, yeah, you know, the, the, the order flow up here at the swing high is kind of bearish. Um, now the next thing is, uh, since we're on point of controls, talk about the prominent point of controls. You know, primary point of controls are, um, so change this back to fixed. Something that, you know, has been in, in a few of the version, earlier versions of order flows, and it, it helps you define, you know, where there's support or resistance in the order flow based on the points of control. And you know, there's three levels that you can have. There's level one, level two, level three. And it deals with, you know, where the point of control is appearing in the bar, you know, relative to previous points of controls, because the point of control is the price level in the bar with the most volume. And if you have certain point of controls appearing at certain points in a bar relative to previous bars, it can give you a clue as, you know, what their support or resistance in the market. Now, by default, they're all enabled and they're all fixed, but I know some traders you know, wrote me over the weekend saying, you know, that they, they love that now that you can have it until tested. And, you know, it's just one of those things that is going to give them that extra visual. Like I said, you know, it's all about having the visuals. Like right here at the swing high, you got this bearish prominent point of control, right? And you see this market had this nice um, sell off. You know, you see the market sort of coming back up to those levels, doesn't quite hit it. Um, you know, here's another bearish prominent point of control. This was a bullish one here. Um, here's a bearish one. Here's a bullish prominent point of control. This is a point of control on the extreme. And you know, it's a very strong signal, right? It's even got a bullish ratio, um, an imbalance reversal. It came right down to that one, traded, you know, at that same level, the market popped up. And again, you know, this is the thing. If you're looking at 
know, this is your normal volumetric chart. You know, what time was this? This was the overnight, 3.30. Okay, you know, I mean, the volumetric chart, at least the colors are red to tell you it's important. I don't know what their colors mean, but um, you know, here you're seeing, you know, there's a lot of things happening. You got a bullish ratio, bullish order flow, because the bullish ratio, you've got obviously the point of control, it's a prominent point of control is bullish. Um, you got imbalance reversal there as well. But it's just a little bit easier to see it here, right? Because now you're getting the plots in there. Um, you know, so again, um, let's take a look, you know, bearish prominent point of control here, bullish prominent point of control here. Now there's some markets, you know, where it just seems you know, treasuries, things like that, in my opinion, have always followed prominent point of controls uh, really well. And again, it's not that you have to trade it for a pullback there. As long as you got that prominent point of control and it's holding, you know, you could scalp it on the way up because, you know, on the way back down, you're getting some bearish things in here, right? You got that inverse imbalance, et cetera. I mean, order flow is constantly changing. Um, but that was one of the, the new changes in this uh, version is, is being able to draw those out until tested because, you know, it, it's something that helps a lot of traders um, find these areas of um, support or resistance now stacked imbalances right we all know what stacked imbalances are it is um you know three or more buying imbalances stacked neatly on top of each other so it's enabled and it's fixed so it's just going to appear in the bar it's not going to draw it out but again you can do it until tested and you know maybe you, you i have it fixed in the bar because i don't want to draw too many zones you know at once and I want you to just add the pieces of the order flow that you want to look at, right? Like here's a nice stacked imbalance being drawn out. Here's another stacked imbalance. Because oftentimes the market's going to come back to those levels. Right? It's going to test those levels, you know, because it's an area where you had aggressive selling or aggressive buying, you know, here, right? Aggressive buying, you, know, you got sequencing, you got a stacked imbalance. You can see if the market's sort of going to come back there, you want to see those levels hold. Now they're not going to necessarily hold indefinitely because obviously things are going to change in the order flow. But when you see those areas, right, you, you watch for them. Well, what happens when the market comes back uh, to those levels, right? Here's a nice stack buying imbalance, right? Market went up, came back down, right to right to that area where you had the aggressive buying. And then you see buying again and goes back up where to this previous high. Now, sort of to follow up what I said about inverse or, you know, some of these other, you know, I think inverse imbalance was one. Um, what was that one that I was just talking about? I can't, my mind is um, market sweeps. You know, here you got a stacked imbalance at the high of this bar, but we're closing below it. That's not a good sign that, that it's going to be effective, right? If you have a stacked imbalance, you want to be closing above it. You want to be trading above stacked buying imbalance. You don't want to have a stack aggressive trading and then the market's trading below it, right? That invalidates that signal, right? And again, sort of to follow up on my point is, you know, you have this bar here, right? This looks like very bullish bar. You got a lot of shit going on, right? You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plots, seven bullish plots. But the market is backing off from the area, right? You got the stacked buying imbalance, right? You've got the point of control on the extreme, you've got an imbalance reversal, you've got a zero print, you got a bullish ratio, um, you know, and you got the engulfing value area. It's very bullish. Well, shouldn't the market go higher? Yeah, it should, but it's not. So what's that also telling you? Well, it's telling you, you know, all is not right, right? And you can see how the market eventually just sort of sputtered out, went sideways, came off a little bit, went sideways um, before selling off. Right? I mean, that's part of trading is, is understanding that, oh, you got you know, stuff that's very bullish, but the market's not reacting that way. It turns it into something bearish. Okay, so um, let's just sort of chug through the rest of these. So that was um, stacked imbalances. Where are we here? Okay, so again, you know, default is fixed, but again, it's something you could change too um, <coughs> until tested if you like. Now, thin prints, okay, this is a new indicator. There's two sections of this. There's thin prints, just a normal thin print in the bar. 
and there's um, <coughs> let me uh, drink some water here. <coughs> and there's uh, multiple thin prints in a bar. Now, uh, so this is gold. So I'll just keep it at you know, the default. I think is set to one, but let's turn it to zero. And what that's going to look for are in the bar price levels where there's um, no volume, you know, where there's no volume either on the bid or the offer. See, here's this is a thin print here. This is a thin print, thin print, thin print, thin print, thin print, thin print, thin prints. And you could actually draw these out until tested. I know some people like to trade this, excuse me, until tested. Um, let me just draw it out here. Until tested, um, because you're looking, for, you know, it's an area where you're expecting the market to repair that area. Okay, so you're looking for the market to come back to these areas. Okay, now you can see in here as well if there's, I talked about multiple thin prints in a bar. All right, so let me just turn off the until tested area. You see here, multiple thin prints, it's going to draw it dark green or dark red, dark red for bearish, dark green for bullish. Okay, so it might be a little bit hard to see, but you know, when you start looking at your charts, it's going to stand out a bit more. And again, it has to be enabled for it to appear. Like here, this bar's got multiple thin prints, one, two, three. So it's a dark red because if bars that have multiple imbalances is going to be red or blue. And you know, bars that have multiple, like this one here, multiple thin prints here. You know, here, right, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So it's just drawing it out. And again, it's going to plot your bar that has the thin prints in it. Um, you know, that's that dark plot right there. And again, you know, it's something that thin print, when you see a thin print in the bar, again, I have it set to zero, but you could use one, two, or three. You know, if you're trading things like E-minis or treasuries, you know, you could set it at five or something. Um, it really depends on the volume that goes through in your bar, um, you know, in the market that you're trading. Uh, so anyway, that's a thin print. So again, by default, it is disabled, even though it's a new one. Um, again, I didn't want to overwhelm you, but this is, this is quite a powerful one. Now the value areas, right? One of the big differences is now we color them as opposed to they were just gray in the past. And by coloring them, it sort of brings your chart a little bit more to life, the difference of black and white TV. So if it's a bullish value area, meaning the bar is an up candle, it's going to color it green. If the candle is a red candle, it's going to color it red. Now the doji candles, are still the gray color, but um, you know, I've, I've been playing around with it a little bit, you know, just sort of changing the colors, just make it stand out a little bit. Cause you know, as someone was talking to me about, uh, you know, bars that, you know, double doji bars, you know, two dojis in a row, but yeah, you can color them the doji bar gold, if you like, just to make it stand out a little bit more you know there's a doji there as opposed to just you know the, the plain gray you know a couple dojis up in here um you know if you like looking for dojis there's some traders i know that that's the whole trading plan is built around looking at doji candles so you know having that ability to color them a certain color you know, is it's going to help you okay so again you don't have to change the color you know if you want everything gray as it was before then you just keep the color um black instead of green right because the opacity the, the how strong it is is going to be at uh, 10. engulfing value areas it's going to be blue or red now engulfing value area right we all know what engulfing bars are right in candlesticks well engulfing value area is the value area that engulfs the previous bars value area um and again you know it's quite useful at uh especially when you see them coming in at you know potential market turning points you know this was right off the low. This one was at the low. This one, again, didn't go anywhere. This one, you got a little bit of a rally. Um, again, that's on Sunday night on a weekend. On, let's go here to the day session. You know, 
the bearish one. Here's a bullish one. Um, you know, here's a nice bearish one at, uh, up here at this swing high. Now, again, it will draw the, uh, it'll plot it. Okay. And this one, we don't, actually, we do give you, you know, value areas. I didn't talk about that, but you, with value areas, you do have, again, the ability to draw it out um, until tested, right? Until tested, until tested. You know, maybe just, you know, you want to draw out the just the engulfing value areas until tested as opposed to both the regular value areas and the engulfing i mean you can do that okay see here all right so you know right up here at the swing high you got that engulfing value area um so it's like uh, here's a bullish engulfing value area right at the low of the day right when you're looking for engulfing bars, you know, you want them at areas where the market could be turning because, you know, it, it indicates a potential shift in trading, basically. You know, you're at your low, but now you've got a lot of buying coming in, some buying volatility, you know, because volatility is what? It's price looking for areas it can transact to. So if price has got to cover a lot more area, then um, you, you're often going to get a, an engulfing um, value area. Okay, so um, let's just scroll down in here. Uh, where am I here? Zero prints. Again, default is on, it's fixed in the bar <clears throat> and it's gonna be dark green, dark red. The opacity is a little bit darker. <clears throat> this is a zero print. So if you have a zero ratio in a bar, it's gonna give you actually a zero print reading as well, but it's gonna color the top two price levels on a bearish one, on a bullish one, the, the bottom two price levels. And, you know, these are areas where sort of the market sort of, when you have a zero print, it's really the market sort of coming down, uh, testing an area, and then leaving it immediately. So it's a nice area for when, um, you know, you're looking for the market to uh, bounce from, okay? And it's also, you know, nice to be used in a move, right, for momentum. <clears throat> so you can draw it out until tested as well, you know. See how the market's just sort of coming back. I don't think you'd really need to do that. Um, I mean, you can, you know, there's some nice areas where the market comes back to. I just keep it as fixed. But again, it's up to you, you know, to draw out what you want to, to have drawn out. Again, you know, it's a momentum tool. So just seeing it in the bar is something that uh, is useful to me. I, I don't need to have it drawn out. Now the ladder content, right? You have your normal bid ask. You could also have, you know, a delta candle, sorry, a delta footprint. You just change it from bid ask to delta. And, you know, it'll just give you the delta at price. This is horizontal delta, um, you know, at this price of, you know, 18, 16, 80, 90. Um, there was four more traded on the bid side than the offer side. Now you also have, you know, you got your choices of, um, Let's go in here, volume, right? The volume for the price, you know, both the bid and the ask combined, as opposed to the volume traded on the bid, the volume traded on the ask. And it's just gonna show it on one side of the bar. It's not gonna put it in the middle. It's gonna put it on the uh, left-hand side. And you also got your choice of um, diagonal delta, right? So that's the delta in the two-way auction on your footprint, okay? so. Um, you see here how it you know it looks very similar to the regular horizontal delta. Again, it's up to you which one you want to use. I, I prefer bid ask and delta. Um, but again, you got those choices there. Now you could actually add additional point of controls. Like the normal point of control is going to appear in every bar as default, it's on, but we set the point of control two and three to transparent so it doesn't show. You don't really need it now that we have the value areas um, because, you know, obviously you're going to, generally you're going to get all three point of controls in that value area anyway. Um, but you have those, you know, you'd want to make it a different color, obviously, than black. Um, just sort of differentiate it. Maybe you want it, you know, like red and, and yellow, but um, you don't really need to do that. The um, short and big numbers is, you know, on the bottom, you know, in some markets that trade a lot of volume, you'll see like, the volume for the day here. So today's kind of 
nothing, but um, let's go back to Friday. Um, again, if you have the volume, the total volume for the day on your chart, uh, where is it here? Vo uh, total volume. It will just, you know, if, if it's over a certain amount, it just truncates it. So instead of saying, you know, 22,633, it would say, you know, like here, 149.7, 149,000. 0.7 K. Okay. So that's what that, that's what that is for. Um, the other thing is there's a couple other little functions in there. Uh, where is it in here? Uh, uh, tick aggregation. If you're trading something like Bitcoin or even NASDAQ, um, you might want to use this. You know, if you're trading Bitcoin, you know, it trades in Satoshis and you can literally buy, you know, a couple dollars worth of Bitcoin, but it's going to register as one trade. But, you know, you're not buying one Bitcoin, you're buying a, a, a fraction of it. And, you know, Bitcoin, even though you look at most charts and it shows, you know, Bitcoin 19,453. Spot seven one, but it's actually like nineteen thousand four hundred seventy three. Spot seven one six eight two three four seven. So by aggregating the ticks, you know it's going to make it more, um, you know, the nineteen four seventy three. Spot seven one, and Nasdaq, right? You know, Nasdaq goes up. You know, it's got a lot of volatility and it covers a lot of price ranges. Some people use the tick aggregation of four, meaning four ticks, which is one point, you know, that would be, um, you know, one, what do you want to call it? One price on the axis. Okay. So it would aggregate that up and down tick. You don't need to, if you're using futures, you don't need to use that. Um, but you have that function, like say people that trade want to look at Forex, you can. The grid color, you don't need to worry about. All that's going to do transparent means it's, you're not going to see it. But if it was, you change it to black or something, then the, your chart would just look like an Excel spreadsheet. Now there's summary content. Now there's a couple changes in here, right? This is the numbers on the bottom of your chart. Now I don't keep them all, but you could have, you know, the ask and the bid volume. I just keep cumulative delta, delta, delta divided by volume, max delta, min delta, and volume. I don't use necessarily the, the total volume. And you'll notice, right? There's some changes here. And total volume, or sorry, delta divided by volume is, is one that we added this in this version, you can see it down in here, but let me just get to a sort of a normal uh, scenario here. What do I got? Oh, I got a, uh, what footprint is this? This is diagonal delta. Let me just change this back to a regular bit ask delta. Uh, uh, where are we here? It's uh, a little bit easier to see here. But what we've done in this version, okay, is we've highlighted certain things in the numbers down here. So you're seeing, right, you're seeing some colors, some fields are cyan or magenta and some are white. Okay, so on the delta divided by volume, if it's over a certain threshold, right? And our default is set at 25%. It's going to color it cyan color, meaning it's strong delta, right? Strong positive or negative delta. So you can see it in here, 95. You can adjust that, right? Extreme delta. And these are the colors, extreme buying, extreme selling. I'm sorry, 25 rather. Um, this other extreme delta threshold of 95 is the other one, which I'll talk about in a second. So how I like to look at these is, you know, sort of, you know, if we're at swing highs or swing lows, highs of days or lows of the days, you know, is there a very strong aggressive buying coming in? Here we have a nice swing low put in right here, got strong aggressive buying, it's a cyan color. It's more to, you know, alert me, hey Mike, you know what, what's happening here? You've got something going on. Or after this swing high is made right here, what do I see? I see some strong aggressive selling, right? I see the magenta, I get two bars here, magenta, magenta, okay, you know. I, I, I don't want to be fighting the order flow, right? I don't want to be looking for reasons to getting long because it's quite strong negative delta. Now, the other thing is the final deltas, right? Cyan or magenta color, right? Magenta is bullish, cyan is bearish. So if I see cyan colors, 
what that's telling me on the final delta number, the headline delta, it's closing within a certain percentage of the max or min delta. So you can see here, these deltas minus 36, minus 101. Well, they're closing near its min delta because they're cyan. So this is minus 37, we'll close at minus 36, minus 106, minus 101. So I know that we are closing at, at our near our highest reading in terms of aggressive selling in the min delta, right? As we just sort of coming up around this turn. So I see that aggressive selling coming in. Now we're been selling off, then we start to turn here. I see the aggressive buying coming in. We got 106 delta, it's magenta. So it's closing near our max delta, which is our strongest delta was in the bar at 107. Now you're gonna see also the max and min delta, you can see white colors, white backgrounds. And um, what that means is there's lack of, you know, positive delta or negative delta. I don't wanna say lack of aggressive trading in the bar because that's not true. Because you can see here, right? This delta has got just one max delta, but obviously there was people buying the offer, but at only one point in the bar for you know, a millisecond, we're aggressive traders in control. And the next bar, same thing, two, next bar, one. So I know in this three bar stretch, you have three bars in a row where aggressive traders just didn't have any control at all. Because normally you're going to see trading back and forth, right? You're going to see some positive delta, some negative delta. But when there's really lack of max delta or min delta, and it's carried over for several bars, that's important information, right? So, okay, you know, God, you know, aggressive buyers just never could have control here in this market at this time. So what's the trade? Trade is to the short side, okay? Until you start seeing signs of aggressive buying coming in. So that was, you know, these are visual, these you can't plot yet. Um, maybe in, in the future version, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. But um, that's something to sort of help you with your Delta analysis, okay? And it's just right here under the summary content. Now, unfinished business, again, it's by default, it's off, but if you want it on, you just click detect unfinished business. You can also draw the broken levels if you like. Um, I'm not gonna get into that today. The volume profile again you know if you it's by default it's off but if you want it on you just click display volume profile which is this one choose if you want it on the right otherwise it would show up on the left now this part in here volume imbalance okay so th there's two parts to this one is the top part so the volume imbalance font is set to 14 that's related to what you're seeing in the footprint the size and the color red or blue, okay? So if you wanna adjust it, you would adjust it from there. Now, again, in the global settings at the top is what your imbalance percentage is, 400 up here, well, imbalance trigger in percent, 400 is four to one. Um, the other part of the uh, thing in here is enable multiple imbalances. And it's fixed, meaning it just draws it out in the bar and what it's going to do is going to put an outline um, in the bar you know again it, the colors you could change them if you like uh i have olive drab and you know so this is green and chocolate which is not brown this is more of this the orangey color but um let's see you can see in here right this chocolatey color here um this olive drab color here so you know olive drab chocolatey, but it's really like an orange or a green. Now, you can actually draw zones out from the bars with multiple imbalances. And what's different about the multiple imbalance zones is, uh, where is it here? When you draw it until tested, okay, well, first we'll draw it fixed, okay? You'll notice I have it set to zero. If it is um, set to one, it's going to draw the, it's going to highlight the higher the low of the bar. However, it's not the low of the of a up bar, it's the high of the up bar or the low of a red bar. And the, the um, meaning for that is 
okay, I've got multiple selling imbalances in this bar. So I know that down here, I, I want this market to keep going in that direction, right? I've got, I've got the momentum, right? So we need to be trading below that. There's no point in drawing it up at the top or drawing it, you know, cause you got multiple imbalances that could be anywhere in a bar. So like here, right, this bar, got multiple imbalances, they're spread out. There's one here, two here, one up here, one up here at the top. Okay, so I know there's multiple imbalances. I need to get past this level for this to be valid, right? If we can't get past this level here, it's not valid. Just as here, right, here's your multiple selling imbalances in this bar, two, three. Okay, this is to tell me, hey, you got multiple selling imbalances. We should be trading to the downside not above the low of this bar okay and again you know multiple buying imbalances yeah we want to be trading in that direction multiple imbalances remember is a momentum signal so you want something to tell you there's you know where you should be trading above or below now if you could actually draw these out as well until tested this is how it looks Give it a second here, right? Like this, right here. I wouldn't use these as support or resistance levels. Maybe you could use them as, as breakout levels, but at, at what point, you know, I mean, I, I don't wanna like, if you have, for example, right? If, if you have multiple imbalances here, I'm looking for this market to move now, right? I'm not waiting for it to come back. You know, this is at 11.39, 11.38. I'm not looking for it to come back at, you know, a half hour later and break through that, I'm, I'm really looking for it to break through it now. I'm looking for it to move to the next bar or the next bar. So, but you can draw those um, zones out if you want. I, I don't think uh, you really need to, but I don't know, you know, I'm always surprised at the feedback I get from users saying, oh, this is how I'm using it. And, you know, it, it just amazes me sometimes. Now, the stuff down here, data series setup visuals, you don't need to test, you know, touch those. That's just telling you the chart what it's looking at um, and where to plot it on the screen. Now the plots, right? So this is the big difference of the order flow trader six is the ability to plot all of these indicators. And this is a list with all the colors and you just open it up. And by default, they're all the set the same, these triangles up or down, up for bullish, down for bearish. Um, and again, we sort of kept all the colors, you know, sort of shades of blue for bullish, blue and green for bullish, shades of red for bearish. But again, you know, you can change them. I, I don't think you really need to, but I'm sure some of you will. Um, but again, if you're, if you're using some sort of analyzers, these are the plots that you're going to use in your analyzer software. So, you know, you can see it's, it's a pretty robust um, upgrade. Hopefully you guys can, you know, come back to me in, in a few weeks saying, oh, Mike, you know, this is great. I, I've gotten some great positive feedback um, from traders over the, over the weekend with the software. And again, you know, say you want to, let's take a look here. Okay, so this is, what is this gold? Okay, so say, you know, I, I'm only interested in bars that have an exhaustion print and, I'm not gonna say, we'll start with exhaustion print, we'll sort of go through, um, you know, has sequencing, has a ratio in it. Um, I don't need a prominent point of control. Um, don't necessarily need that. And a stat and a thin print, okay? Obviously every bar is gonna have a value area. Um, Okay, but uh, I don't need a zero print. So what it's looking for, and let's turn off the multiple imbalances. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm telling the system, hey, look for bars that have exhaustion print. I'm more interested in bars that have exhaustion print, um, some sequencing, an order flows ratio, and uh, what was that one, the thin print, right? It said at zero. And you know those are the trades that I wanna take, You know where it's got, basically those four things appearing, all right? So I'm gonna look for, you know, or maybe just three out of the four, right? Because I, I realized, you know, not every bar may not have a, a sequencing. You know, I'll look for the bars that have the, the three, right? 
because it's not that you can filter out the bars that don't have them because like this bar's got the exhaustion print. So it's going to print the exhaustion print, exhaustion print. This bar's got the exhaustion print, exhaustion print and um, the thin print. You know, but I, I would just be looking for the bars that are showing me, you know, maybe three out of the four. You know, it'd be nice to get all four. But, you know, a thing like ratios or sorry, the thing like uh, sequencing isn't necessarily going to happen, um, you know, as often as we would like. But, you know, I'm sure there are going to be some bars that have them. Um, you know, it's going to give you, you know, all four plots. You know, like this bar here, it's got everything. I mean, got the little move up. Um, so, you know, that's, you know, so how you could advance your, your trading, you know, by focusing on the things in the order flow that are valuable to you, right? And and sort of disabling the things in the order flow that, you know, you don't want to look at, right? Say, uh, Mike, I just want, just give me a software that is going to show me you know, imbalance reversals until tested. Fine. Okay, you, you just go and enable that, change it to until tested, disable everything else that you don't want to look at. You know, you don't need thin prints, you don't need value areas, um, you know, any of that other stuff, basically. Okay, so, you know, it's a much cleaner chart. Obviously, there's, you know, here's one, Here's one, here's a bullish one, here's a bearish one, here's a bullish one. Um, you know, bearish, bullish, bearish. I'm just drawing out those zones, bullish, bullish. So, you know, you have that flexibility to refine what you're looking at in the order flow, as opposed to having everything up there that is confusing you. Because I'm a big believer, you know, there's only, you know, you only need to add the things to your screen that is gonna help you trade. It's going to help you find nice trades as opposed to I got to put everything up there at once. I mean, you want to do that, you can just go through, you don't need necessarily need the order flows trader software. I mean, Ninja Trader, right? It's got all these indicators in here. You can add, throw them all up on there, right? The, the whole spaghetti system. But you're not going to do that. You want to add the uh, pieces of order flow that's going to help your trading, right? Help you become a better trader, understand what's happening in the markets.